Welcome to Technado with Don Pizzette. Featuring Sys Admin Expert, Don Pizzette. Security Specialist, Daniel Lowry. And Peter. Hello and welcome to Technado with Don Pizzette. A very special episode. It is the 200th episode of this podcast and I am joined... As always, not, not necessarily not always. always, but uh, by Don Pizzette. And Don, is this, is this where you thought you'd be when you started this lowly podcast? Uh, honestly, I didn't think we'd make it to 200 episodes, so there's that. We'll just come right out and say that one. And, uh, uh, and you know, we, we've always done this kind of as, as fun and had a good time with it, so uh, uh, hopefully this episode will be just as good as the first 199 that we Ooh, put wh- a ton of effort into. That's a very low bar. It's <laughs> yeah, a very low bar. And we've got uh, Daniel Lowry there as well. And Daniel, is this the highlight of your career? Oh, why not? Right? <laughs> Sounds good. I like that. I didn't think we'd get past 200 minutes, and here we are, 200 episodes. Yeah. It may not may, not, may not be the highlight of your career, but it'll definitely be the end of it. Oh, it'll be on a it'll be on a reel somewhere. Speaking oh. of the end of career, uh, we have a very special guest joining us today, all the way from the internet, is Network Chuck. Chuck, how you doing? Doing pretty good. I've got coffee. Can't complain. That's all I need. Now, would this be the the low light of your career then? It's just uh, normal. Okay. <laughs> no, it, it's awesome. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. This is just a normal day. All right. Well, uh, introduce the cast. Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do a lot of giveaways throughout this show. So you can see that we are sporting some new swag. We've got these Technado with Don Pizzette shirts. Let me show you the back. It says. I heard that on Technado with Don Pizzette. So you could, if you hear things. And then we've got the uh, or is Technado it? with Don Pizzette sticker <laughs> Is it more there. like, I heard that? I don't <laughs> think it is. Yeah. I don't no. think it no. is. No. I like that better. To that, so. <laughs> well, we'll be giving, uh, giving some of those away throughout the show. So uh, pay attention because they will be time-based uh, things where you have to enter to win. And I uh, wanted to also let you know real quick about something new, another big announcement we saved for this show. We have a brand new website <laughs> that we've been working on for 200 episodes. It's over at <laughs> techne.do. Thank you to the Dominican Republic again for that amazing <laughs> domain name. You can see you can listen to the latest one on uh, Spotify there. We've got all the video versions as well of the uh, the recent episodes. You can check those out. And then at the bottom of the page down here, we've got uh, all the different places where you can go and subscribe and listen. Uh, I just kind of put the big ones there, but there's plenty more of those. And if you check out the About page, we've got uh, where you can meet the host, find out about our backgrounds a little bit and uh, where we all come from. And that good looking guy there. You gotta warn people before you put these images take up. Take a new right? picture. There's the <laughs> there's the crew behind the scenes, Brad and, and Courtney, our executive producer and our, our director, and then behind the scenes we can kinda see, you know, how we make the show happen on a weekly basis and some of the info there. And finally, the most important page is the contact page with a great picture there on the top. <laughs> but uh, we've got the form here, so if you want to suggest someone for a guest or yourself, you can click that. But if you want to provide feedback, we do a listener uh, mail segment, so that's a great way to get in touch with us. But this is also the way we are going to do the giveaways today. So if you want to head over to techne.do uh, and the contact page, I think we're going to put a link in the chat if we haven't already. But let's do this. The first five people to go there and fill out a form and in the, the comments put, Don is my hero. Don is my hero. Go ahead and send that in and you will uh, win a t-shirt and, and sticker pack to start. How's that sound? What if I already did it? Well, you already have a shirt. <laughs> ah. So I'm not sending I want you another one. Come on. If what if I a- don't know how to spell Don? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you have you, an alias. What you got to use is regular expression to make sure that you grab. Right? There you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bonus points. Yeah. If it's in binary and you got it in like one of the first five, too, that's yeah. like an, an extra shirt. Yeah. You are <laughs> you know pretty awesome at that point. Well, we've got this guy here, Chuck, and we haven't really been talking to him yet. So uh, I figured it would be good to know. I, I know him as the guy with a million subscribers on YouTube and, and all the stuff he's doing today, but I don't know how Network Chuck became Network Chuck. Huh. So let's go ahead and learn more about that in our first segment, Origin Stories. All right. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. This is a pretty hardcore origin story. 
and I'm hoping Should I be doing something? No, no, not yet. I'm hoping you have a pretty hardcore origin You're story. You're supposed but, to be yeah. originating. He's like, <laughs> picture this, Sicily, 1933. <laughs> so, so how did this work? How did you become uh, what you're doing now? When you when you got into into IT, did you say, yeah, I want to be uh, a trainer, I want to be out there on, on YouTube, or did you uh, have a different plan at first and then uh, ended up here some other way? Well, I think like 90% of every person who wants to get into networking, I wanted to get my CCIE and then figure it out after that. <laughs> so that was my <laughs> first thing I wanted to do. Um, no, so it all starts back to where I was um, I was selling plumbing supplies. I was literally selling toilets. That was my job. Um, so getting different back to the routing. point, low yeah. points. <laughs> yeah, different kind of routing, yeah. <laughs> I was bad at that. Um, so getting back to the low point, high point, that was a low point for me. Um but I had a young family and I needed to change my career. I hated what I was doing, wasn't making very much money. So I just started studying IT and um, I'm a very big advocate of self-study, like just grind it out. Um, I think that's a key skill you have to learn as you're progressing in IT. You have to learn how to self-study because that's like half the job is learning every single day. So anyways, I, I went, did self-study, got my A plus, went from there. And um, I, I, I got on the help desk and I, I became a network engineer. And my, my goal was just to be that IT guy. I wanted to be an engineer, become awesome. I think one of my goals at some point was to actually work at Cisco, which I I never did, but I got to go to Cisco and, and, and explore that place. But um, I wanted to work at Cisco and eventually work for Google or Amazon. Uh, but then I started watching uh, some YouTubers to kind of help me stay motivated when I was studying for IT certification. So like it's it's hard to get your certifications, especially if you're doing it by yourself. Uh, it's hard to stay motivated. It's, it's hard to um, get ideas and, and, and gather habits and everything. So I would get on YouTube and, and find people. I, I watched, watched people like George Amazon. I read blogs from Amy Engineer and it inspired the heck out of me. The only problem was, is there wasn't enough. I wanted to see more and more. So I eventually got to the point where I'm like, you know what? I, I've, I've been on YouTube before. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the cinnamon challenge guys. Have you ever, you ever oh, seen that? Oh yeah. yeah. That's a good one. So don't do that. That was me. Yeah. That can <laughs> be that was, deadly, right? That was, it was my fault. I did the first video on YouTube. Oh, oh did, did you really? Challenge. Yes, huh. yes. You did the so, first uh, cinnamon challenge? The first cinnamon challenge, yeah, yeah. I was wow. even featured on like a YouTube special. Like this is this is the guy who did it. Um, it was just a series of videos where I, I, I had a goat, goatee, a little goat, not a full beard. Um, I was 18 years old and I had all my friends and family like doing the stupid thing and uh, it, it was dumb. Got like 3 million views though. Anyways, so I had a YouTube history. So I'm like, you know what? I want to try this. I want to just try to document my journey and maybe, just maybe, I can be that that kind of support um that motivation for someone else. And I just, and you know, when I first started it, it sucked. <laughs> like I, if you see my first video, I'm in like a network closet trying to be really quiet. I'm like, okay, here, here's my router. Here's my switches. Like I, I'm, I'm literally at work <laughs> trying to not get caught. And, um, I wouldn't tell anyone about my YouTube channel either. I, I was so embarrassed by it. Even like up until like maybe five years ago, I wouldn't tell anyone uh, that I worked with. I had a YouTube channel. But I just started making videos, just documenting what I was learning. It sucked. It was crappy, but it, it was fun. And um, slowly, I gathered traction. People started liking my stuff. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll like make a few more. Let's make a few more. And before then, I, I got discovered by a training company to go work for them. And I just decided to go YouTube full time. So that's where I'm at. That's pretty cool. And, you know, I, I'm curious. Obviously, you've got a a focus in networking, uh, thus it's you know your first name, Network Chuck. Uh, but you know when you started out in IT, were, were you kind of a generalist, or did you know from the very beginning you wanted to work in networking? So I had no idea what I wanted to do. So my my dad was actually a system admin. He worked with VMware. So I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, but when I got on the help desk, I was studying for my A plus. And I looked over across the aisle because normally in an IT department, it's everyone's in one room in a smaller business. I look over and I see this guy and he's like plugging away like he's in the Matrix, just typing away at this like black and white screen. I'm like, that looks amazing. What is that guy doing? I want to do what he's doing. So I walk over and I'm like, OK, wh what is that? It's like, oh, I'm, I'm programming a, a Cisco router. I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> what is any of that? So uh, long story short, I just start to hang out with him. I said, can I shadow you? Can I find out what this is? Can you can you? Make me your Padawan. I want to learn. And he did. I, I would go to the data center with him uh, on the weekends when they'd have to do kind of uh, move ad changes and, and do some big upgrades. And I just kind of fell in love with it. So, yeah, to start out with, I, I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I, that just kind of caught my eye and I fell in love with it. 
So can can we call you Cinnamon Chuck then? <laughs> or would that be, now that is we that your first origin. name? <laughs> Cinnamon hey, Chuck. Had, had I known he did the first one, I, I think it would have been appropriate for us to do the Cinnamon Challenge. And when I say us, I mean you guys. Yeah, I was going to say, you're I, like, <laughs> I'm allergic, allergic to right? Cinnamon, yeah. 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 Oh, that's right, you are. I already did it, so I'm, I'm out. But yeah, you guys can do it. <laughs> you punched your ticket already. Huh? Congratulations yeah. on not dying in that. <laughs> yeah. and, and I feel like I'm the same way where I haven't told anybody about this YouTube uh, event yet. Where you know I'm I'm embarrassed by this. Okay, oh, by Technado. <laughs> by Technado. Yeah, well, I mean, like, yeah. there's any other emotion you could feel. He's like, yeah. yeah how mom, long does that take before that goes away? <laughs> Here's the thing, mom. Don't Google my name, right? <laughs> For a variety of reasons. Yeah, yeah. Especially I, on like the had, FBI. Had to make some money. Yeah, <laughs> gotta pay the bills. That's right. Wait, you guys are getting paid for this? No, no, no. Like your oh. previous engagements. All right. Let's you. Yeah. Uh, hey, we've got some uh, some wieners uh, for the first shirts and, and stickers giveaways. Uh, first, I want to say a couple of people saying hi. Uh, Sylvian is watching in Quebec. Uh, Adam says happy 200th. Uh, Gurgly says uh, greetings from London. We've got people in Algeria, India we've been talking to, so that's fantastic. But uh, the first round of the people that won the T-shirts and stickers there. We've got uh, Nick Miles, uh, David Aylwaters, uh, Chris Balsamo, uh, Gino Gibbons, and Michael McCormick. So congrats, guys. We have your emails. We will reach out to you and give you a link to uh, send those over and, uh, and let Did you take a look at those. Work golf clap. The golf clap, yes. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah. If you haven't seen Men at Work, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've listened to Men at Work. <laughs> You're welcome for having That's not seen also, it. Also, yeah, oh. <laughs> that was entertaining. We've got uh, Greg who watching, who's been a member for ten years and helped him get multiple certifications, and also, of course, Brian Bauer is watching. And I'm extremely disappointed he did not win one of the shirts the, the first time out. I'm I'm shocked and amazed, but he's actually in the chats in the on air page on ITPR TV site and on the YouTube live. So I get he didn't have enough windows. To, yeah, well, uh, I throw that out. I hear there will be other chances. There will Ooh. be other chances. And we're, uh, I should mention, too, we're not just giving away shirts. Later on, we're giving away an IT Pro TV membership, an annual uh, standard annual plan, and that is valued at $299 U.S. dollars. And we checked. Uh, that is also 27,816 Argentine pesos oh. or 941 Dogecoin. Got to have Wait, is that coin. accurate? Because that changes pretty quick. It was accurate <laughs> as of yesterday. <laughs> as of yesterday. <laughs> when yeah. I wrote that down. So Doge, now it's like Dogecoin is definitely seven, doing some movement. Seven Dogecoin. <laughs> Uh, hey, we've uh, we've got some shout outs from some people that were excited, wanted to, you know, wish us congratulations. I mean, we're humble people, but we're, you know, it, it's a big milestone in our lives. <laughs> so we're going to take it. <laughs> so, you know, oh, stop. If, if people want to praise stop. us, uh, we've got some some past guests, some, you know, just friends of the show. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that first round of some some shout outs here if we can. This is Jack. This is Jack Reese Sider. I was a guest back on episode 130. Now there's a Technado episode 200? Holy cow, that's a lot of episodes. Congrats on this milestone, and thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom with us. Hi, this is Gilbert Gottfried, and uh, I just want to announce the guy's tech news podcast, Technado, just hit 200 episodes, and you know what that means? It'll be that many more people who will be disappointed by it. <laughs> and that many more people who will say, why am I wasting time with this? It's total shit. <laughs> anyway, this was Don's he's idea. So yeah, he, he never listen to Don's ideas. <laughs> and, uh, they, but it was Don's dream. And you know what they say? Uh, Don's dreams are all wet. They're all wet dreams. And Don, uh, <laughs> why don't you go right now, burn all your bed sheets with your wet dreams. <laughs> and uh, somehow we talked Daniel and Peter into doing this. And uh, so Daniel and Peter, uh, drop this, Don. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? I really like Peter Griffin here. What a shout out for Don, Daniel, and Peter of the podcast Technado. You guys just hit 200 episodes. That's freaking sweet. I've never heard of or listened to your podcast, but I did hear you do a segment called Grinds My Gears. What the hell? That's my stick. Get your own. <laughs> just kidding. But always remember. Bye, 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 bye. 
It's a word. Well, a bird, 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 and a bird is a word. Awesome. Well, thank you to those friends of ours. <laughs> For reaching out, well that was done. just so nice. Was that a video filter, or does he actually look like that? Right, Th- that guy that he looks like that. That, that is, is a cosplayer. Crazy. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. Yes. Oh, man, he's got it down, doesn't he? He does. He's he's. And I always wondered about that. Like, you know, he's putting himself self out there, but like a fictional character, does he have to pay royalties or? Good that? question. Or, I, I guess mean, cosplaying. You know, if he can, he legally change his name to Peter Griffin. I don't see why and not. Then, right, like this, is just me. Mm. I'm changing my name to Network Chuck. <laughs> no, we're gonna we're gonna wipe this out. That. Yeah, <laughs> Chuck's like, I'll see you in court, butthole. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean the the sham will be revealed the moment Peter tries to like subnet or do anything. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> on the channel here. today. Uh, how would you subnet? You just just deep fake Chuck's old videos. <laughs> and, uh, start with the cinnamon one and go from there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, uh, that was fun. We're going to do a couple more of those um, throughout the show for sure because we have some more people uh, who were, were nice enough to reach out. But we wanted to play a game now. So we're going to play a little game that we came up with just for this show uh, called Linux Distro or Band. So what I'm going to do in a second here, I will read you a name, and you guys will just go around the room, and you'll tell me if you think it's a Linux Distro or Band. Love you guys to play along at home uh, in the comments. Let us know what you think. Um, Some of them you've probably heard of, some you haven't, but uh, I'll keep score here. And uh, you know what guys in the uh, in the control room, if I if I go too long, because I have a lot of them here, just tell me in my ear to stop. Uh, but I'll keep going in, until we we have a winner. So let's go ahead and uh, lay down some game show music. There we go. Very dramatic. All right, our first one here is colon open bracket. Now it is literally just looks like the emoji for a frowny face. Yes. So is this a band? Or is this a Linux distro? Don, let's start with you. Uh, gee, I don't know, so I'm going to have to guess. I'm going to guess Linux distro. I'm going to guess that you're going to be guessing on most of these. <laughs> Daniel, how about you? Since I've seen the uh, Linux family tree uh, graphic, I will be also doing a lot of guessing, and uh, I also will guess that this is a Linux distro. Okay, Chuck, what do you think? You know, i got to be the oddball. Be That's the a band. Oddball. Do it. A band. That's a band. All right. Uh, pronounced colon open bracket. They are an electro pop band from Aberdeen, ah, Scotland. Good job, Chuck. <laughs> Eat it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so they toured with Get Cape, Wear Cape last year. All right. Not one of the later uh, contestants. God, that music is loud. I got to look these guys up now. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I'm releasing a distro right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is not real time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. Our next one. Uh, by the way, Chuck's in the lead. One, yeah. one nothing. Congratulations. Uh, all right. Next up is Crunch Bang. Crunch bang. Let's go opposite order this time. Chuck, what do you got? Crunch bang. That sounds like a Linux guy. We're, we're going to go with that. Linux distro. With a Linux distro. Okay. And uh, Daniel. That makes uh, Man, that's a tough crunch bang. I could see that being some new wave pop punk something or other from east somewhere. East Germany. Yeah. I'll, I'll say <laughs> Linux distro. <laughs> You're saying Linux distro and Don? I guess I'll ride the Linux distro train. What the heck? All right, we're all together. All aboard. And it is a small Linux distro and Lime CD based on Debian Stable, featuring the open box window manager and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, <laughs> development ended for that in February 2015. So uh-huh. uh, if you get it, it's not stable. It's never, been dead never, for a while. Never forget. All right, next up, uh, mm-hmm. one of my favorites is the Tony Danza tap dance extravaganza. Daniel, why don't you go first? Yeah, I'm, I'm just because. That sounds like it should be a band name, but I also want to go with Linux Distro because Smart. that sounds like something a Linux person would do. Uh, Don? Tony Danza Tap Dance Extra. I'm trying to think of like other things TDTE could stand yeah, for. Yeah, does it stand for something? Uh, I, I'll stick with oh, band yeah. on this one, though. I, that's got to be a band. And Chuck? Yeah, I'm I'm with Daniel, man. I, th- I think that's going to be a Linux Distro. That's not like a Try geek thing here. to do. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right, well, this is an experimental avant-garde math core and grind core band. The Tony Danza tap ga- dance what? extravaganza was active from 20, uh, 2004 to 2012, and they were very extravagant, according Grind to Wikipedia. Core. And math core. Ma- oh, yes. Math yeah. core is actually math- we, we brought their uh, audio up the other day when we were running through this, and it's actually better than you would expect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the I listened to some math metal, <laughs> and uh, it's very interesting music. So, All right. Next up, uh, audio file. Audio file, spelled P-H. Audio as it should, but just so you know, it's not gotcha. like computer okay. file necessarily. Uh, let's go, Daniel. Well, no, that's Audio Slave is a band, mm-hmm. so an audio file must be a Linux distro. Okay, Chuck. 
I feel like if they're going to go for the pun, it'd be an F. So I'm going to say band. Okay, and Don. I don't know that a band would be gutsy enough to call themselves audiophile. Like, that's a commitment to audio quality. Yeah. I, I'm going to go Linux distro. All right, and uh, Don and Daniel are correct. It's a Linux ah, based on a custom yeah. real-time kernel. Audio processing is the first priority of this specialty crafted Linux distro. Nice. There we go. So there you go. Hmm. Uh, recapping right. the scores real quick. Don's at three. Daniel's at two. Chuck's at two. Uh, so we have had a lead change. Mm. It's right. close, though. Yeah. Neck and neck. It's moving yeah. around. Uh, all right. Uh, next up is Backbox. Backbox. Uh, Daniel. Yeah, I'll, I'll switch it up and go Linux Distro. Linux Distro. Don. Pretty certain that's a Linux Distro, but I'm thinking if you were a band and Backbox was your name, what would be your mascot? That's a good question. <laughs> Isn't that like a game you play at parties where you put the little box on your back and it's got like uh, ping pong balls in it? Yeah, the twerk? I don't know. <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> so many good ideas here. Um, I'm going to go with band. Uh, you're going to go with Bands going out, ladder, uh, trying to get his score back, and he is wrong. It is a wow, Linux wow. distro uh, based on Ubuntu. Um, it's used for penetration mm -hmm. testing and security assessments. It's on really? fast, oh, nice. easy to use, et cetera, et cetera. See, we're learning. We're learning and we're playing. This Didn't, is great. So Backbox. now i got, now I got to play around with Backbox because it's a pen testing distro. Yeah, there you go. Backbox is still around. It's under a different name now. I, I can't remember what the new name is. There's a couple on here. It's that called Frontbox. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple on here that you'll see. I'm bringing the music down just a little bit in my ear. All right. Uh, next up, we have Voyager. 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 Not, Voyager. not Journey. Voyager. Huh. Okay. Daniel. You know, I have yet to say band, I think, so... Go on band? I, will, I will break with tradition and go with band. All right. Dan, Don. You know, Voyager, it, so a lot of Star Trek fans uh, making Linux distros. I, yeah. I could see there being a Voyager Linux. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know a Voyager Wait, James band. James Ortega would be freaking out right yeah. now. He loved Voyager. But I, you know, I'm thinking about like all the band names that are kind of like that, you know, like yeah. Journey and Foreigner and stuff. Starship Voyager. Mm, tough one. I, I'm going to, I'm going to go band on this you one. you go band? Yep. He's band going band. As well. Okay. Uh, there's just mm. a lot of talking there for not much content. All right. And uh, Chuck, what do you got? <laughs> That's tech native. <laughs> um, <laughs> so new tagline. I, I think uh, distro. I'm feeling distro, distro, man. I feel like it's a really geeky name. Let's go uh, with that. Let me tell you about this one. Voyager is a progressive metal band from Perth, Western <laughs> Australia. <Yeah. laughs> Also, Voyager Live is an Ubuntu-based distribution and live DVD showcasing. So, oh, it's both. It's a both and. Yes. Ah, yeah. uh, tricky, tricky. Now, I never would have guessed that it was a metal band. I would have figured, like, disco. Yeah. A progressive metal band. <laughs> Something, yeah, like that. Progressive disco metal. metal. What is progressive metal? Is that new metal? Is that I'm like... not sure. Progressive metal is like, um, uh, what is that? Animals Without Leaders or whatever, that kind of stuff. Men it's... Without Hats. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, I'm going to skip down a little bit. Uh, Satan's Penguins. <laughs> Satan's Penguins. Satan's Penguins. Chuck, let's start with you. <laughs> Satan's Penguins. Okay. Um, I thought this is too easy. I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to say band. I'm going to say band. band. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I'm trying to trick you. I, that's what I feel like. Don? It's got Penguins. It's got to be a Linux distro. Okay. Daniel? Ah, uh, I'm stuck between two really good reasons to go with. <laughs> <laughs> One over the other. You know, uh, band worked for me last time, so what the heck? I'll go with band. All right. You're going band. Make sure I'm getting these scores in the right spot. Uh, Don, you said... Uh, I said distro. You said distro, yep. yes. And Chuck said band. Uh, Satan's Penguins is a black metal band from Sweden. Uh. And, and uh, <laughs> Here are the members of this band, by the way. Killer Penguin is guitar, bass, and sax. Oh, yeah, Killer Penguin. Yeah, he's, he's great. And Fish, <laughs> Fish Butcher <laughs> plays guitar. Fish Butcher. As he does. I mean... But really, Killer Penguin's a, carrying the thing with three history. instruments. Yeah. So he it's, really is carrying the band. Yeah. yeah really so there's is. only two penguins in the band. I'm assuming they don't tour. I'm assuming that this is just in the recording studio. It's regional, you know. They keep it local. Yeah. They yeah. just tour yeah. around Sweden. Uh, yeah. A <laughs> different know. fish stand. Bjorn's fish stand. Uh, mm -hmm. uh. All right. Uh, oh, I like this one a lot. Tin foil hat. Tin oh. foil hat. Don, let's go with you. Uh, I'm going Linux sister on that one. Okay, Daniel. I'm going segment on Technado. <laughs> it is also a segment on Technado. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I'll go. Um, I'll go Distro on this one. Okay, and Chuck. Yeah, I, I feel Distro. That, that, that's that's good. You have all selected the same, and you have all selected right. It is a bootable, floppy Linux <laughs> distribution focusing on extreme security. Wow. Right, because tinfoil hat, right? But yeah. it's a floppy yep. 
floppy disk? That's how secure it is, Again. Don. You can't even run the damn <laughs> Look, thing. Look, this is from Wikipedia. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is Project 86. Project 86. Let's go Chuck. Hmm. That's going to be a Linux distro, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, no, no, actually, you know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold oh, on. Hold on. Take a break. Not sure I think this is a trick answer. thing. I... No. Um, I'm going to lock this one at band. You think band. I know enough about computers to trick people. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's new to the show, folks. Uh, yeah. Daniel, what do you got? Um, yeah, I'll go band. What the heck? Sounds band. good. Okay. Don? Well, shoot. I, I was going to go band because like, Project 86, it just sounds too much like it's trying for x86. Right. Uh, yeah, screw it. I'll stick with distro. Why not? Get you some. You, I mean, if I do the same as you guys, I'm not yeah. going to turn the game around. All right, right? Don, yeah, well, true. Uh, interesting approach, but you are wrong. Oh, oh, who American rock band from Orange County, California, formed in 1996. From uh, they the released OC, 10 man. albums yeah. and wow. collectively sold almost 500,000 units. After well, they murdered that. their way through projects 1 through 85, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they've risen to the top. <laughs> it's like right. Heinz 57. <laughs> uh, Don currently has six points. Daniel has... Seven and Chuck has six. Damn so it. it's anyone's game. <laughs> I am the lead. It's anyone's game right now. Because I am guessing. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is let's see. Oh, I like this one. Hanthana. 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 I don't know that I'm pronouncing it right. Hanthana. Uh, oh, I gotta yeah, ask you. Gotta you gotta tell us. Go. All right, uh, Don. Heater. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm off my game now. I got the last few wrong. I'll, I'll go uh, Linux distro since. I've been wrong all, right. all these times. Daniel? <laughs> I'm going to be wrong with Don and go distro. Distro and Chuck? Hmm. Are you a loner or are you Damn following I. like a penguin? I have no idea. I want to try to pull ahead here. I think they might be wrong. Let's You're go band. Band? Okay. Lock band. Uh, Hanthana is a Fedora-based uh, <gasps> Linux distro yeah. designed to cater to the needs of Sri Lankan computer users who are oh, unable wow. to access the internet what? frequently. Many of the most wanted applications are built in. That's awesome. Oh, it was Hanthana with an H. I thought it was Panthana with a P. Oh. Don, Don, so I, right. I didn't even Pan, know. It, just, it was no. Panthera. Pantera is <laughs> yeah, it's Pantera like. Linux. Yeah. All right, I like Wes this. is in there going, Pantera. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just do a couple more here. Uh, I wrestled the bear once. That's all one word. Uh, I wrestle... I don't know if it's I wrestled a bear once or I wrestle the bear once. <laughs> it's one of those two because it's there's no space. It's that, it's that old SNL skit, uh, the bear. <laughs> I wrestled the bear once, yeah. you know, and then I ate a sausage. It All was right, great. Let's go, Chuck. <laughs> Band or Linux? Dude, I have no earthly idea. Um, I Linux, distro, go. Okay. Uh, let's see, Daniel? Uh, Band, whatever, yeah. Don? Um, I Totally don't know. This is um, no clue. I'll go distro. Okay. I wrestled the bear once, often stylized in all lowercase, yes. Was an American metalcore band formed in <gasps> 2007 in Shreveport, Why are these all metal bands? Because we love... Who else oh, yeah, stupid right. Names like this. <laughs> They're the most eclectic and eccentric people, and that's why we love metal. <laughs> all right, let's, let's roll through these last few. Uh, test Icicles. That is the best name. Isn't that the best band name ever? (laughs) Test Icicles? Uh, I'm sticking with Distro. Uh, Okay. Uh, And Daniel? Um, Yeah, Distro, sure. Okay, Chuck, Test Icicles. That's got to be a band. Come on. It's going to be a band. Uh, Chuck, you are correct. Test Icicles was a short-lived dance punk band formed in England. Uh, Yeah, so good for them. All right, let's cut down here. I put one on here that I, let's, I'm trying to find some more of the popular ones. Let's see. Okay. Here we go. Uh, liquid lemur, liquid lemur. Oh my goodness. Daniel. <laughs> that sounds like an Ubuntu. <laughs> like, <laughs> feisty fawn and liquid lemur. And, um, so I'm going to go with band. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Don, what do you got? I'm going to just continue my descent into loss with distro. Okay. And Chuck. <laughs> um, liquid lemur. Liquid lemur. What does it even mean? Uh, I'm going to go with band. <laughs> Band. Go with band. All right, uh, Don, your descent into failure has been reversed. Liquid Lemur is a desktop uh, <sighs> Linux distribution yeah. based on Ubuntu. So, yeah, because they're the ones that do the alliteration. Oh, I was right. You were totally right. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yep, know yep. why you uh, why you went away. Because I don't now. pay attention to that kind of thing. That's well, why. Here's the thing: these next two might trick you then as well. Penguin Prison. Alliteration is, is that where again. the killer penguins go? It is. <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is it like a federal penguin prison? Or is it a <laughs> Chuck, what do you got? Penguin prison. Um, this sounds like a secure Linux distro. I'm going to go with Linux. Okay. And Daniel? Oh, I like it. I'll go with Linux. 
He talked you into it, and Don? I'm going to go band. And Don is really making that comeback happen. Hey, Penguin Prison. Yeah. Good job, An Electro Don. pop project composed solely of New York singer, musician, producer, and remixer Chris Glover. I feel like when you were looking these band names up, you got to Killer Penguins and then Penguin Prison <laughs> and said, oh, hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> Winner. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, let's, do, let's do three more. Uh, Fleet Foxes. Fleet Foxes. Uh, we're, we're going with the theme here. So, Don, what do you got? Ubuntu wouldn't do a plural animal, right? So it's uh, it's got to be a band. Uh-huh. You're going with which band? He's band. going band. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Daniel? Um, distro. Why not? Okay. <laughs> and Chuck? Well, I'm not going to go with Dan this time, so I'm going to go with uh, band. <laughs> with band? Okay. Um, yeah. When I was coming up with these, that's the exact thing I thought, Don, was will they fall for this one even though it's plural? And uh, and they did not, at least, well, Daniel did. Uh, <laughs> they didn't fall for anything. American just... indie folk <laughs> band formed in Seattle, Washington, nominated for a Grammy in uh, 06 for Best Folk Album. I like how Peter well. assumes I actually thought my way through these. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two more. Um, we've got uh, Smegma next. <laughs> Smegma. How S-M- spell that? S M E. G M A. So I've always heard it pronounced schmegma. It could be. Maybe it's a different word. Yeah, yeah. that's regional. Maybe it is. <laughs> it's uh, regional. It's, it's Daniel, colloquial use. <laughs> go first, Daniel. Uh, schmegma going distro. You're going I like distro. It. And Chuck, what do you got? Schmegma. It sounds like a nerd made that up. Let's go distro. <laughs> Nerds are also in bands. So I, yeah, I don't think even a nerd would name their distro that. I'm going to go band. Yeah, band. <laughs> You can start a new band every week. (laughs) Smegma is an American experimental noise group (laughs) formed in Pasadena, California, United States in 1973. Back in 73. All right, there's one more. Oh, yes. Idiots. One more. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, uh, I want to do another giveaway uh, so we have a chance to calculate uh, who is doing that. So let's do another form that you fill out. Not the same thing that you're going to say. We want you to say, I've subscribed. So go over to, to, to techne.do, uh, find that contact form, and put in there, I've subscribed. And really, to make it fair, you should actually subscribe to the YouTube channel, to the podcast, any of that stuff. But it's you don't have to. Anything. to Reader's yeah. Digest. Well, you got to push people, huh? <laughs> yeah, there's no purchase <laughs> necessary to win, um, but... Anyway. Nor is there a way to purchase at all. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, there's no purchase. It does possible. make Peter feel better about his job, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are in a close game where it could come down to this last one. Let's start the music again here. All right, there we go. All right, last one here. Bad baby. Bad baby. Bad baby. Alliteration Bad. again. Hmm. Uh, I don't, don't know if hmm. that gives you any hint. Bad baby. But, uh, How Don? do you spell it? <laughs> uh, oh, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, because nothing on this list is spelled <laughs> correctly. Uh, B-H-A-D. B-H-A-B. I E, mm-hmm. bad baby. Would you like me to use it in a sentence? Huh. <laughs> bad baby is either a Linux distro or a band. <laughs> country of origin. Yeah, country of origin. <laughs> yeah. America. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go, Don. Uh boy, I. Don is our leader right now. Uh, yeah. I. Does he hold the lead? I feel like you would end on a distro, but I'm gonna have to go band on this one because I just can't see a way to connect that to technology. Okay. Yeah, Daniel? I'm, I'm going to have to go distro on that, I you guess. You go distro. Okay. No, I'm sorry. I, no, I you're mean, going band? band? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, <laughs> it sounded like you were saying, agreeing. <laughs> and uh, Chuck, what do you got? I, I'm going to go with band on this one. Band. Yeah. All went with band. And you are all correct. <laughs> Bad Baby is an American rapper, songwriter, and internet personality. And you'll you'll know this. Uh, she first became known from an episode of Doctor Me Phil Outside in 2016 <laughs> uh, when she said the phrase, Catch Me Outside, how about that? And became a viral video meme. A couple of her songs include Hi Bitch and <laughs> These Hoes. Now, Love These Hoes is spelled H E A U X. All right. And Bitch is spelled B I C H. Sophisticated. More alliteration, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> you know. So that's what she's been up to yeah. since then. She's cashing in. And I'm saying this because I read it in the news, but apparently she, she like made a million dollars on OnlyFans in like a day. Really? <laughs> well, good mm-hmm. for her. Congratulations to Bad Baby. We all caught you outside. Yeah. How about we're, that? On our, <laughs> How about that? we're on our 200th episode, and in one episode, yeah. <laughs> she is She's eclipsed. Yeah. The destroyed one, all of us. One line from Dr. Phil. All right, well, let's look at the scores here. We have, uh, with nine points, Chuck. Ooh. 
Uh, and then with 10 points, Daniel. Ooh. And then Don had 12 points. Oh, Ooh. Don, big winner. Ooh. 12 points. Congratulations to Don there. I want to check uh, your you. bank account before we call this official. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be the same. <laughs> now let's see who won them shirts there. Do we have our... Oh, man, we got a lot of shout-outs, too. Let me mention a couple of these. Oh, we got somebody watching from the Bermuda Islands. North. Nice. Oh, cool. Uh, Ooh. A- Noe Sosa, a big fan of ours, uh, says to Network Chuck, will you eventually cut off your beard and sell it on eBay? <laughs> 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 I, think, I think we want an answer here. Uh-huh. Maybe. So okay. when I hit 2 million subscribers, there you go. maybe. 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 Yeah. I think Non-committal if language. You, if you get to, like, 8 <laughs> inches of beard, you can donate it, I think, then. That's how that works. Um, all right. You got to dip it in your coffee, though. First. And, <laughs> well, you know what? Let's uh, let's take uh, let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back and we'll announce these winners. How about that? Sounds so, good. Uh, we're gonna take uh, just just a second here, just uh, get a sip of water. But we got a lot more to do. We've got the news to get to, uh, and a bunch of other fun stuff. So stick with us on Technado with Don Pizet. Guide online IT training. Oh, Guide oh. online IT training, but it's boring, out of date, and pricey. Well, IT Pro TV is always engaging, always fresh, and plans start at just $29 Sorry, a month. I, I it's online IT training do that doesn't suck. Start today at ITPro.tv. How do IT leaders stay on top of their game with the IT Pro TV webinar series? Twice per month, IT Pro TV presents a webinar on current topics in the IT world. What are some of the key things we should be doing in our organization to make sure that we're prepared for disasters and then... So what do you say we go ahead and get started with today's topic, how to train your end users to threat. So we're going to talk about some of the major things that you need to do to help keep your people safe while they're working remote. You can catch IT Pro TV webinars live or watch on demand when your schedule permits. See them all. Visit itpro.tv slash webinars today. This is Kevin. He's studying online for a Microsoft certification and using another online IT training service. He's also on his second pot of coffee today to stay awake. And this is Kyle. He's also studying Microsoft but using IT Pro TV. Rather than watching a boring voiceover PowerPoint, he's actually enjoying the training with two hosts in an interactive format. Both Kevin and Kyle have access to virtual labs and practice tests, but Kyle can also get help through a live chat with other IT Pro TV members and his instructors, as well as post to a Q&A forum. He can even search for exactly what he's looking for in the interactive video transcripts, all while paying less than Kevin. Oh, and Kyle can also watch in comfort via Roku app. Kevin and Kyle are both learning IT. But Kyle is enjoying the journey. Want to be more like Kyle? Here are the plans to start your IT Pro TV membership today. Welcome back to Technator with Don Pizet, 200th episode live here on YouTube. We've got Don, Daniel, and the Internet's Network Chuck joining us. And uh, found out he does not know his Linux distros. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't or he's not great at bands. Yeah, or, or that. Yeah. Yeah. There were there were more bands. Either way, back to the drawing board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, find find another career. He's not gonna have, he's not gonna be band Chuck. B a n n e d. Yeah, band Chuck from this show. Yeah. He acts out again. All right, yeah. we've got some more winners of these t-shirts and sticker packs here. Our next round of winners. Oh, see, I called him out, and he's been ready this whole time. Uh-huh. Brian Bauer uh, got in there first. Good for you, uh, Robert Sorkamp. Uh, whew. Alexandra Dobroniak, something like that. We'll go with that. Dobroniak, <laughs> whatever. We got your email. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> Walter Schultz and Steve Saunders. You guys are our winners. And the next giveaway will be in just a few moments. And that, again, is for the uh, IT Pro TV standard annual membership valued at $299 or 22,580 rubles. Um, so... Oh, and it's also valued at 183,182 Costa Rican colons. Nice. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but I <laughs> prefer to think that they're... Did you say colons? I did. That's colons? how it's spelled, so that's oh. what I'm saying. They're just removing people's colons and <laughs> the, using the colons of Costa Rican. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's not their currency. They're, the neighboring countries come in <laughs> yeah. and they, they mine the, the I've been to colons. Costa Rica. It's nice. It's a lovely place. Yeah. Not a lot of colons. No. <laughs> All right, uh, what do we got? Oh, you know what? We got some more shout-outs um, from, from some more people that have told us how much oh. they love us. So 
uh, let's go ahead and check those out if those are ready to go. From the whole talk by from the whole Talk Python community, congratulations to everyone over on the Technator team. Two hundred episodes, that's a major milestone. You guys should be proud. You know, I'm often asked if we ever see two different predators show up at the same time in the same investigation. And the answer is yes, it's happened on a few occasions. But this, this is the first time a whole team doing a podcast has surfaced at the same time in the same investigation. Don, Daniel, Peter, secret screen name, Technado. What do you mean by Technado? Hmm? Chris Hansen here of Hansen vs. Predators. To catch a predator and have a seat with Chris Hansen, I'm going to need you to have a seat right over there. I've been going through some transcripts. I have some questions and some concerns. You know, uh, fellows, you should know this, especially you, Daniel, being a cybersecurity guy, that we're still dealing with a pandemic. You're supposed to be socially distant, responsible, not going into a dark studio with microphones, talking about things all tech. Yeah, really. 200 episodes. It's just how he is. That's a lot of episodes, actually. Congratulations on that. But don't meet me in a dark kitchen someplace for an interrogation, not being able to get to 201. If you can manage that, well, I'd like to congratulate you on your accomplishment. It's huge. I'm only on episode eight of my podcast, so I know what it takes. Anyway, good on you. <laughs> Continued success. I'll be watching and listening. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep on doing the podcast. See ya. Hey, what's up, guys? Reaching out to Don, Daniel, and Peter <laughs> over at Technado. Hey, if you're Technado. still trying to place this extremely recognizable and, well, let's face it, extremely good-looking young man. Zach did a movie with Yeah, him. I said young. Hey, guys, oh, yeah. it's me, yeah, David Faustino, better known to you as National Bud Bundy. Yes, guys, it is I, the Grandmaster, the, the Grand Flasher, the Grand Bastard, the, the Gas Pastor. I think you guys get the point. Hey, listen... Uh, I hear you guys just hit 200 episodes of your silly tech show, Technado. Who came up with that stupid name? <laughs> hey, guys, congrats. You're almost catching up to uh, Mary with Children numbers there. I think we were at, like, 265 or something like that. So you're almost caught up to us already. Hey, uh, lots of love to you guys. Congrats on 200 episodes. Shout out to Technado and a giant whoa, Bundy. <laughs> that one was for you, Don, for yeah. sure. You know, I, I will say that I have at, at some point early in my career, somebody asked me like what I, I saw myself doing. And and I literally said, I just want to make sure I go through life without hearing Chris Hansen say my name. <laughs> 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 well, Don, you know, dreams are meant to be shattered. Well, you know, what were you rocks. saying is in your trunk, Daniel? Uh, yeah, <laughs> nothing at all. Some Zemo. Why, why don't you have a seat? Uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead and sit down? <laughs> Zemo and duct tape is a weird yeah. combo. Am I okay to leave? Yeah. Can I leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, this guy's been with us, Chuck. This, this Chuck guy. Yeah. We've got transcripts. He's been with us the whole time. Uh, hey, Greg Lord from uh, Pittsburgh says hi, and he's been a member of IT Pro TV since they started. Uh, since back, uh, he's one of the IT Pro 100, one of the original guys. Mm. So, thanks for watching, Greg. Uh, all right, well, let's go ahead and get to the news here. We've got a couple articles. Uh, normally, uh, when we do these shows, we do about five or six articles. Uh, I'm going to trim that down a little bit today because we're doing so much other stuff. But our first one is, let's see, I'm looking for the. Oh, there it is. New tech this week. New tech this week. We got the scoop. We do. All right. Uh, this one is <laughs> from endgadget.com. Here's everything Apple announced at its Spring Forward event. A long overdue iMac refresh, a surprising iPad Pro update, and more. So, uh, Don, we, we talked about this a little bit before the show, and you were not as impressed as I was by the little tile competitor. What, what stood out to you from this event? All right, so the, the two big parts of the announcement that we care about as legitimate IT professionals that we are. Uh, first off, the new iMacs. Uh, so Apple has completely refreshed their iMac line with their M1 processor. So they've gone all in. At this point, they are now selling more M1 device models than they are Intel models. So the end is near. Likely by this time in 2022, Apple will be selling exclusively devices powered by the M1 processor. So that one is here to stay, you know, get, get ready for that adoption cycle. Uh, the other thing is they announced new iPads, which are also powered by the M1 processor. So they've moved away from the ARM processors they were using before over to their new M1. Uh, and so they, they've gone all in. And so now you've got a whole ecosystem where 
their desktops, their laptops, their all-in-ones, their iPads, all using the M1 processor. I don't know if they're going to move the iPhone to it or not, but it will certainly create a, an easier world for developers. It'll allow them to better control the security, but it'll also allow them to better control the ecosystem, a.k.a. the funnel to get to your pocketbook. So uh, so there, there's that. That's probably the, the biggest uh, two announcements. And then they released some bullshit tiles. So that was, <laughs> that was the announcement. <laughs> Are you? Uh, I love the tiles. <laughs> yeah, I love them too. I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, uh, I've, I never actually used the, the tile brand ones, but these ones sound cool for, you know, dropping in luggage, dropping in your keys, things like that. See, I do this crazy thing where, like, I don't lose things. Okay, the airline <laughs> takes your bag sometimes. Okay, whenever I've traveled keys. with you guys, oh. you if, guys always check your bag. If the airline loses your bag, this tile is not going to help you. <laughs> it helps you tell them it is in Bangladesh. <laughs> I see it on my phone. <laughs> Chuck, are you a, an Apple guy or, or what? So recently I've been embracing more PC, but yeah, I've got MacBooks. I've got Apple TVs everywhere. Um, so yeah, I lose my Apple TV remote like all the freaking time. Like it's never anywhere. So my kids just eat it or something. I don't know. So having a tile would be amazing. I, I'm I'm a huge fan of whatever they're doing with that. Definitely um, that checked out. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm I, I'm not a big fan of the M1 yet though. I, I I think it's a cool idea, but a lot of the software I use hasn't embraced it yet. So as soon as the software supports there, I'll be there, man. I'll show up, and if it's fast, I'll, I'll love it. But right now, it's not there yet. So not the chip itself. It's like just the compatibility with other stuff that you use. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's fast, but. If I can't use it, who cares? Yeah, in the past, Apple always made a big deal out of you know releasing an emulation layer to be able to support the old tech, and it was always slower and more painful, so people had a slow adoption cycle. But the M1's emulator for what it you know runs the 64-bit uh, x86-64 code, it, it actually runs at damn near uh, bare metal speeds. So you, you can adopt oh, really? a lot of software over to it. Microsoft Office, some of the bigger suites like that have already moved over to M1. So it's, it is a... It, it's got to be one of the fastest adoption cycles I've seen for hardware. So I, I'll stand by it that by this time next year, I think that that's going to be in full swing and done. It won't be like when they went to Intel, it was a solid two to three years before people were ready to move from PowerPC to Intel. Uh, you know, that, that's a lot different this time. Man, I was, I was really hoping to give a shit. <laughs> but nothing, nothing, nothing here did it for you. There was an announcement about like the the Apple credit card, or you can you can uh, monetize podcasts now on iTunes. <laughs> Where you can really? have like premium subscriptions. You know, why would you announce that? Like, <laughs> here's our new products. Aren't you excited? Look, now you can pay for podcasts. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> you couldn't do that before. How awesome is that going to be? Yeah, yeah. And there, there's a new. I think there was an iOS update coming out as part of this as well. Uh, iOS 14.5 probably just makes it work with all this new crap that they've got, <laughs> <laughs> where, where you can automatically pay for your podcast. No, <laughs> it's going to start showing up on your bill. This. Technado with Don Pizet is free. That's right. And will always be free until we change that. Well, so yeah, remember yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's all, it's it's right. yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Beer, beer. I walked it back at the end. Calm I think down the free. There is the reality of if we haven't made any money in 200 episodes, I don't think we're going to start soon. Yeah. <laughs> just hemorrhaging cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't put. We should have put like a PayPal link on the website as well. Well, in our in our current technical investment world, the fact that we've made zero dollars increases our valuation an insane amount. So that's I, true. I think we could IPO. Yeah, that's and, true. You're uh, probably ready for. Yep. You, you have to be a, a billion dollars to be a unicorn. Is that what? I it think is? we're there. Yeah, I, feel like I we're think there. we're there. <laughs> <laughs> we're a billion fake internet dollars. Oh, man, Sounds good to me. Swimming in them. All right, uh, let's move on to our next article, which is something we've talked about in the past a little bit. So this is Deja News. Deja News. All right, uh, this one comes to us from Bloomberg.com, and I could barely get past their paywall to check this one out. <laughs> uh, on the cybersecurity <laughs> side, it is U.S. unveils plan to protect power grid from foreign hackers. Isn't it a little late for that? I, I feel like <laughs> they've been They're here. developing a honey grid. Right? <laughs> honey this is grid. fake grid. <laughs> so, Don, what's the, what's the plan here? You know, honestly, Daniel's joke is better than what they're proposing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they're probably going, damn it, why did we think of that? <laughs> so uh, they've announced this new plan, and it's pretty, pretty hilarious, really, because they, they said it's, it's a 100-day sprint. So a 100-day sprint that's being rolled out to get our power grid to basically be protected from hackers in the outside world. The problem is, it, the plan is, I, I, it's insane. So basically what it's calling for is all of the various utilities companies to 
basically consult with the U.S. government and talk about the protections they have to have in place. Things like uh, authentication and firewalls and VPNs and all the things that you need to properly, securely manage a, uh, a SCADA network like theirs. But that's really all they're going to do in the first 100 days. And then after the first 100 days, it's up to all of those utilities to pay for and implement those technologies themselves. There's no funding or anything in this plan they've got put in place. It's super nebulous on where the money's coming from. So the reality is they've outlined a 100-yard sprint that says, or a 100-day sprint that says, for the next three months, we're going to talk about it. Nice. And then after that, in the next few years, maybe we'll be secure. And so this this really is not a good. I, it, there's no teeth to it. I just see a bunch of people sitting around a, a table at a restaurant going, uh, "Yeah, yeah, I'll get that. I just got to hit the the head real quick," and <laughs> walking away from the table and never coming back. Yeah. <laughs> I think the first hundred days should be them just going around like taking chewing gum and sticking it in all the USB ports and the computers. <laughs> be like, well, we are way more secure than we were <laughs> when we started this thing. One step, <laughs> step one, and then unplugging the internet cable from the back yeah. of the. Thing. That's a great first step yeah. right there. Now, Chuck, I know you've been dabbling in, in security stuff. Have you messed with any of the industrial control systems or SCADA, anything like that? No, no, I haven't. But yeah, just to touch on that plan, man, like that's I, my I live in a kind of a rural area and my utility, they barely have a website. How they can like actually put in security. I, I, I don't see that happening. I think it's a nice fuzzy feeling that they're talking about, but it's not going to happen. Well, how inter interconnected is this stuff? I mean, we talk about the grid, but, you know, it, are these systems connected? The power system that he's on versus the one well, we're on and all those things? A lot of them are not. Uh, think about that water treatment facility out of, outside of Clearwater that got hit oh, a few yeah. months ago, yeah. right? Where the, the, the actual industrial equipment was not connected to the Internet. But like they had a, a workstation yeah. that they used. Uh, was it like go to my PC or something? Yeah. Uh, log me in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know something. They would log into this workstation remotely to then be able to control it. And they had weak passwords, or a former employee still had a password mm -hmm. and was able to connect in. Winter 2020 wasn't a good yeah. password. Yeah. Password yeah. one two three. Yeah. Uh, and they got in. So that's the real problem. Is that there's there's no security being implemented and you'll have employees that say, well, ah, the water system is not connected to the internet or ah, the power system isn't, but then all these workstations around it are. And, and that's where the vulnerability so comes. A in. couple of years ago, Kaspersky did a, um, they, they did a study on how many of these industrial control systems, SCADA systems and things like that. And OT are being connected and what kind of vulnerabilities are we seeing for those that are, and it was, it was a lot. It was actually, the thing is, is that, everybody's used to working from home or working remotely. They don't want to go out into the field and actually work with us. So they start plugging in like cell cards and stuff and Wi-Fi enabling these things so they can get the access mm -hmm. to them. And now you've, you've got a web interface so that you can log in and start working with them. Well, now you're exposed to all these standard type of internet facing security problems that everything else does. You've just turned that thing into an IOT device mm -hmm. and guess what? IOT security is a giant dumpster fire. So welcome yep. to the show. Yeah. So this computer is <laughs> not not connected to the internet, but this robot that can put push the keys for me oh, is. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's just basically laziness. Yes, is what yes. We're saying. I cannot be bothered to put on pants yeah. to make the power work, Peter. <laughs> well, is part of that is, is part of that the pandemic? That no, that, no. This was this, this was, yeah. was this was like two years ago, three years ago. Oh, okay. That study came out. So yeah, I can't blame the pandemic for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nope. Like flu season? Yeah. I don't know. No, we're just <laughs> really bad at security. <laughs> All right. Well. Get uh, get the Tesla battery in your house and the solar panels that look like roof tiles and stuff, and you're good. Yeah, you're good. I like it. Yeah. I mean, all the infrastructure in the city yeah. is still going to go down, and the looting will start, but... <laughs> but hey. You'll be fine. We live I'll in rural good. Florida. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he lives in rural, He's in rural Texas. Texas. We're all good. Sure, surrounded uh, by yeah, firearms, yeah. I'm <laughs> just assuming, based on, <laughs> based on the, the location there. All right, well, uh, look forward to... Another Deja News article in 100 days where we talk about what... <laughs> I'm going to push for Honeygrid. What they chat I think, about. I think that's the thing. You should see if you can get on this yeah, panel. I got to get, get in there. I like it. <laughs> got to come up Honeygrid. with a better name. But um, <laughs> All right. Our next article here is uh, one of our favorite segments. And this one is uh, Who Got Pwned? Looks like you're about to get pwned. Fatality. Yeah! All right. Disgusting. This article comes to us from Tom'sHardware.com. Linux Foundation bans university after it intentionally submitted buggy patches. So I can understand how buggy patches could get put in unintentionally, but what what's the point here? Were they testing something to see if, if we could get past the sensors? Or? 
Yeah, so there were a, uh, there were a couple of graduate students at the University of Minnesota, and they were doing research on ways to infiltrate or compromise systems. And what they were testing was they said, could you take a system that is otherwise secure and intentionally push software updates to it, updates that that looked like they were fixing something, but were actually reintroducing old bugs, right? And they decided to target the Linux kernel because they figured if they could compromise the Linux kernel, it's used so far and wide across the world that it would be like instantly compromising a ton of machines. And so they, they took a pre-existing flaw that had already been patched and fixed in the kernel. They then created a patch that fixed something else but reintroduced the kernel flaw that had been previously patched. And then they pushed it up as a, a commit to the Linux kernel for approval. And what happened here is they, they did it a few times, trying to see if they could get one approved and get it to make it through. Uh, and then the Linux kernel maintainers caught on, and they uh, you know immediately banned these two people that were doing the, the updates, rolled back any kernel changes they had submitted, as well as rolled back every kernel change ever submitted by the University of Minnesota to be able to review it, mm -hmm. because basically the university was intentionally pushing up malicious changes to see if they get approved. Now, the kernel maintainers, they're pretty upset. They said, look, we're not some testing ground for you to test this theory out. But it's kind of egg on their face in a bit, because, all right, these university students were testing, but... There's probably malicious actors out there doing the same exact thing. But the University of Minnesota has been banned from doing kernel updates for the time being, and they're having to reevaluate that kind of research. And we saw something similar with NPM a few months ago, where a, uh, a security researcher was able to compromise Microsoft and Apple and several other places by uh, kind of using a, a package name that they knew was an internal package name, but they posted on a public repo so it was able to be pulled down. Uh, and because they were basically testing that theory on people's production networks, they got in a bit of trouble for it. So this is, is, is kind of a, a egg in the face on both sides. It's funny. I see security researchers do this kind of thing from time to time where they're like, well, yeah, this is kind of a, a production thing, but I think pretty sure there's a flaw here. Only really one way to find out, and that's to actually do something. But then you've got that internal conflict going on inside of, do I do this? Do I pull the trigger? Do I check and see? And there's there's groups of, of individuals, uh, groups and individuals, should I say, that that do that. They say, I'm just doing it. And they think that that is that justifies what it is they're doing. And maybe they are correct on that. You know, uh, go on the ethics of whether or not you should be engaging in attacking without permission people's systems for the purposes of finding the flaws, verifying them and then letting them know so that they can patch them. I mean, maybe there's an argument to be made there, but you know that's a tough one. That comes down to like I, I kind of I kind of sympathize with these researchers saying we wanted to see if we could push something insecure and you approve it, and you you kind of did for a little bit and then you found us out and now you now you've barred us. So the intention I think is is the key behind it all. I don't know. I, I feel like for the intent of their paper, they, they were trying to establish the feasibility of this, right? The title so of the it was paper, all about feasibility. feasibility of stealthily introducing vulnerabilities in open source software via hypocrite commits. Ah. And I feel like they could have proven this without that, without actually doing it somewhere. You know, they could show like, look, here, we're going to craft a commit that fixes one bug, but introduces another one intentionally. And here's our paper. We've just shown how it can be done. You guys all need to watch out for this. Yeah. I, I don't think they actually had to do it. And to target the Linux kernel like they did, that that's a big mistake. Yeah. And maybe if they would have went to something now, a little... Were they targeting, like, were they trying to test the process of approval or yeah. just seeing if they could just hide this bug? Kind both. of, kind both. of both, right? So, uh, pretty much, if you submit a valid commit, the, the the Linux kernel team is going to approve it. So they kind of knew that as long as they could fix a real bug, then it was going to get al aligned. But to sneak in a previous vulnerability and have that approved, that's really the part they're trying to test. And mm. the the Linux kernel community has has been a little vague on what they approved and what they haven't. So it, it's still yet to be seen if they approved anything. So you're saying their intention was basically to scratch a curiosity itch and not necessarily to secure the process of yeah I, hey if i want to know if my car's windows are bulletproof you i'm not going to go charge at the white white house uh, you know like that's not the way i'm going to yeah, test yeah. that uh, i am dead <laughs> shoot your own windows let, yeah. me, let me tell you what even if they are bulletproof they're not that bulletproof <laughs> they, they could have pushed pushed Pished. Yeah. They could have pushed a code commit to something right there at the university right. to test this. I mean, they, they didn't have to go that big, the kernel. Well, and, and even if they did want to go that big, then maybe they could have done something that wasn't like an insecurity, push something that did something, but it was innocuous. Maybe yeah. that would have been a better way to go. Yeah, just a comment or yeah. something. Yeah.
something that you can see is there. Or even a function, something that actually does something, but it's yeah. innocuous. It doesn't really do anything, but it does something. And, you know, Chuck, you had put out a video not too long ago where, where you were showing, um, I forget what it was, like you had bought a vulnerability off a of site, but you, you took some time mm -hmm. right at the beginning to caution people about how you've got to be careful how you test this and what you do with it, right? I mean, there, there's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, the first thing you have to think about, like, they're basically pen testing is what they're doing. Like, they're introducing yeah. uh, vulnerabilities, and you got to have permission. you got to have, like, that contract with the company. You can't just go, I'm going to test the, the Linux kernel vulnerabilities. Let's let's see this. Let's test the whole process. What if you actually do it and something bad happens? Um, I think they're getting what they deserve. Um, yeah. It's unfortunate. Like, I feel bad for them, like, with Daniel, what you said, but that was kind of dumb. You can't just do that. <laughs> yeah. Uninvited pen testing <laughs> is hacking. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, my uh, my my fallback, like my default, how do I proceed with caution and with permission all the time? Yeah. I mean, go on <laughs> sites go. like HackerOne and see if if yeah, you know yeah, the company's on there if you're if you're thinking about it and, and then you can have a good way to do to respond well, to I mean, close. I, I, and... I, I'm, if they have a bug bounty program, then that would have been a good way to go well, about they, this. They were specifically targeting open source projects. Right. And those are the ones that are least likely to have bug bounty programs and like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. official, they're not yeah. going to pay. Yeah, no. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of times it's just all about introducing more security into the ecosphere. Yeah. So. All right, guys. Well, hey, I uh, want to let you know about a couple things that are coming up over uh, at our sponsor, IT Pro TV. we got a couple webinars coming up. There's one uh, next week on Thursday, April 29th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and it is Going Cloud Native with Linux. Move your Linux workload to the cloud. And that's with Tamika Reed. She's uh, one of the founders of Women in Linux, uh, and Don is going to be the host of that one as well. So we'll have some fun on that one uh, Thursday, April 29th. You can head over to itpro.tv slash webinars to register for that. And you can also see all of the past webinars there that you can uh, watch on demand. And the next one after that as well is navigating the ISC squared certifications, SSC, uh, SSCP, CCSP, and CISSP. <laughs> and that is Thursday, May 6th at 2 p.m. Eastern time with our very own Adam Gordon. Um, so he's going to help you understand the difference between all those things that I just said. Uh, and that's, uh, like I said, May 6th, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, head over to itpro.tv slash webinars. And while you're on the Internet, head over to our new website at techne.do. And uh, on the upper right-hand corner, there is a button that says our sponsor, IT Pro TV, something like that. <laughs> Click on that. Uh, and you can get a 30% off coupon code to IT Pro TV, and that's good for the lifetime of your personal plan. You can also uh, request a team trial on that page and see all the cool things available uh, for teams and the pro portal and, and great stuff over uh, at IT Pro TV. Uh, so use that code TECHNADO30, 30% off for the lifetime of your subscription. Yeah, there you see it. You got... Uh, 5,800 hours of training, uh, practice labs, uh, practice tests and virtual labs are available as well. And you can make a free membership to check it out. Uh, no credit card required to do that. So uh, head on over there and see what that's all about. All right, we got our final giveaway that we want to do here, guys. And uh, This is the big dog. This is the big dog. This is the ITPR TV membership, the st uh, standard annual membership, uh, which is 299 U.S. dollars or 0. Mm -hmm. 0.0054 Bitcoin. Um. That's or 22,251 Bangladeshi Taka. Hmm. That's fun to say, Bangladeshi Taka. I thought it was too. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Did I say the Argentinian one? Yeah. 27,816 Argentinian pesos. It was pesos. one of the early ones you led with. Did yeah. I? Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Get with the times, Peter. No, oh, my bad. <laughs> All right, well, uh, what you're going to want to do for this one, oh, it says in the bottom there, so you got to jump start. Head over to <laughs> techne.do and go into the form and say, oh, it's on the sticker here. I get my news from TechNATO. So go ahead and do that, and you'll uh, you'll get that ITPR TV membership. Hey, if you're already a member, you know, back off. Let the other ones get in there <laughs> and uh, share the wealth a little bit and let everybody enjoy that. Uh, I think we have some more shout-outs, and, um, you know, we're getting down to the B list. Uh, David Faustino. It's hard Probably to tell low, that one. low B, yeah. <laughs> low B. Yeah, yeah we're <laughs> this next one. Well, we've got a couple of, of uh, actual former guests, so those ones are great. Not taking anything away from <laughs> yeah, them. I'm, I'm, gonna, make, I'm gonna make my own cameo. You're getting it for like twelve <laughs> cents. <laughs> when, when, are you are you on cameo, Chuck? I feel like you could be on there. No. Are you familiar with cameo? Maybe. Uh, no, I'm I mean, not. That's not where I got these from. I no. called my friend oh, Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I assume that. 
But that yeah, that watermark can, was just, yeah, that was, yeah, that was a watermark that I do for fun. Yeah. Uh, that's a project <laughs> I work on. But uh, uh, yeah, so we've got a couple more of those. So let's go ahead and, and see what our friends have to say. Oh, 200 episodes. Wow, Tech- 200 episodes, Technado team. That's fantastic. Congratulations. And uh, here's to 200 more or even more than 200 more. I got my Diet Coke here for you. So I'll raise a Coke to you. Uh, all the best and take care. Thanks, Jimmy. So hi there, friends. Christian Brinker from Microsoft here. A huge congrats on your 200th episode. A huge milestone. Keep it up. And I hope to be back soon to talk about things related to Windows Virtual Desktop. So see you soon. Oh, let's see if we if we have that winner yet. Let's see if we've got any other, um, other people that want to say hi as well. Um, all right. Well, uh, Amelia Simpson says hi from Jamaica. Uh, and she, well... She says, I'm a big fan of IT Pro TV, but then she says, and a super big fan of Network Chuck. So it kind of makes me feel less good about our... (laughs) (laughs) Like, congrats, Chuck. Uh, So understand, Chuck has over a million subscribers right there. We have, there's that. that 11. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And they love us. First up... It's not about quantity. First up on the membership, the year membership valued at uh, 941 Dogecoin is Noe Sosa. Noe Sosa. No way. Hey, no hey. Hey. congratulations, Noe. Good, good friend good job, of the show brother. there. Congratulations. Um, John Kelly Close, right behind. Uh, didn't quite make it, but, uh, <laughs> but congratulations. So, uh, hey, I guess I guess that's really really it here. Um, remember, uh, subscribe. Subscribe to the Pro TV uh, YouTube channel that you're on if you're watching this there. Uh, and if you're watching this on replay, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. You can head over to techne.do, and on the bottom there's all the areas where you can watch it. Um, send in send in some uh, some mail to us, and we will be doing that listener mail segment uh, when we, uh, you know, you send us articles that you're interested in or if you want to be a guest, uh, you can let us know there as well. And uh, that's about it. So let's go around the room. Uh, Chuck, thank you for joining us. I'm happy the cinnamon didn't kill you and we were able to uh, enjoy the, the growth of you into what you are today. I appreciate it. Um, it's been a pleasure to come on the 200th episode. It's pretty cool. It's a huge accomplishment. So, yeah, it's been fun, guys. Yeah, a lot we, of fun. I know we got to let you go because I've watched you fill that coffee cup like three more times. <laughs> so, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm like shaking right now. I'm, I'm like, sure you're ready. Yeah. <laughs> there's a catheter under the table or something. <laughs> yeah. right. Daniel, congratulations to you as well. On um, what? The, okay. <laughs> I mean, you, you weren't on 200, but I, I think no, you I were on the second episode to start. I think Wes yeah. and, and Tom were on the when. first one. Yeah, it was fun. Actually, we'll, we'll look back in just a second here as we as We, we got a retrospective. Yeah. And, nice. uh, and Don? You know, your dream, uh, your wet dream, as Gilbert and Dante said. <laughs> uh, Stormy Daniels. <laughs> it's come a reality here yeah. with Stormy Daniels at the end, so uh, congratulations. Well, you know what I always say. It's uh, reach for the stars, but keep your feet on the ground. There you go. But, uh, I'm known for saying that. There you and, are. And I why are my up. feet soaking wet? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for joining us, uh, all of you on YouTube Live, all the great comments there. Um, appreciate that. And uh, we will see you guys next week with episode 201 of Technated with Tom Bazette, and we're going to go ahead and uh, roll it out with a little look back at uh, the first 200 episodes. 